When it comes to the history of America, there are few things as prevalent as the wild, wild west. I mean, after all, it's no surprise that many countries outside of the United States of America still think that all Americans are cowboys with our big wide brim hats and our cigarettes like Marby Reds hanging out of our mouth and of course our six shooter revolver guns strapped to our hips. Thank you a lot, John Wayne. That's your fault. Either way, one thing that's for certain is when it came down to shaping the Wild West, there were few things as influential as the lever action rifle. And while there were a lot of lever action rifles that were produced over the years, there was one that seemed to take the world by storm. This Woodstock repeating rifle would shape the history of firearms as we know it. But where did the company come from? And more importantly, who are they in 2022? I'm Dustin with We The People Holsters and in today's video, we're strapping the wagon to the oxen and hitching a ride on the Oregon Trail, praying we don't die of dysentery along the way to find out the history of Winchester repeating arms. Winchester, my Winchester. 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 Now, before we get into this absolutely enormous lineage of a history lesson of firearms today, folks, as much as I would like to tell you that we have a holster for your Model 92 lever action, we sure don't. Sure would be a lot cooler if we did though, am I right? Regardless of that slightly painful admittance though, if you're looking for a dope t-shirt, then look no further than we the people holsters.com. I know it sounds counterintuitive, right? But trust me here, we have more than holsters. Gun belts, tactical leggings if you're a lady or if you just like leggings, I'm not gonna judge, you know, because that's not who I am. And of course, awesome t-shirts like our brand new Let Freedom Ping shirt, which is made from dirt to shirt right here in the United States of America, down to the very cotton that it's grown on. We the people holsters.com, just do it. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying these videos and drop a comment down below if you have a manufacturer that you'd like us to cover on the next one. All right, let's talk lever actions. It should come as no surprise to you that Winchester Arms was originally founded by, you probably guessed it, Mr. Oliver Fisher Winchester. Born November 30th, 1810. Yes, I said 1810, 1810, not 1910. In the town of Boston, Massachusetts, Mr. Winchester would spend the majority of his young life like, well, pretty much every other young man in the early 1800s. After school, Oliver would go on to open up a men's furnishing store in Baltimore. What's it with all these gun guys starting in like clothing or curtain rods and stuff? By the mid 1850s, the Winchester men's store was absolutely thriving. And by 1857, good old Oliver thought to himself, hey, what if I decided to buy this gun company with all my extra money? And he did. Winchester acquired the, at the time, Volcanic Repeating Arms Company of the city of New Haven, Connecticut. And by 1866, he would rename the company to the Winchester Repeating Arms Company. The first gun to be produced by the newly dubbed Winchester Repeating Arms would be none other than the model 1866 Yellow Boy, which was cleverly named for the year it was produced and the fact that the receiver was made of brass and thus it had a yellowish color, right? I mean, it was rather in ingeniously named if you ask me. The Yellow Boy would come to be what is the first of a long history of Winchester repeating lever action rifles that would quite literally shape the world as we knew it today. By 1869, America was growing and in a fast hurry. The completion of the Transcontinental Railroad would signal big things for the American economy, and because of that, the economy would boom. Demand would rise significantly for supplies that westward travelers could take on their journeys as they sought to capture the otherwise untamed Wild West. And one of the most in-demand products of the time would be none other than the one and only Winchester repeating rifle. In just a few short years, demand would rise so significantly that Winchester began working on their next rendition of the repeating rifle because that's just what you do. The new rifle would feature a loading gate for the tube magazine on the right hand side of the receiver, a wooden forearm stock to assist in holding the rifle versus the otherwise just metal tube, and a metal sling mount for easy carrying of that rifle through the west because, well let's face it, nobody wants to carry around a rifle all day. This next rifle would debut in the year 1873 and would be dubbed, you guessed it, the Model 1873. Wow. 
Over the next decade, the Model 1873 would be hailed by some of the most famous people in all of the history books. We're talking guys like William F. Cody, AKA Buffalo Bill, Teddy Roosevelt, and more all had a hand on the Winchester repeating rifle and had absolutely astonishing things to say about it. Teddy Roosevelt would go so far as to say, and I quote, the Winchester is by all odds the best weapon I ever had and now I use it almost exclusively, end quote. The 1873 would go on to be produced for decades and ultimately dubbed the rifle that won the West. Unfortunately, the Winchester repeating arms legacy would live on for decades to come, but the same cannot be said for the founder, Mr. Oliver Winchester. Mr. Winchester would unfortunately pass away in the city of New Haven, Connecticut. Although he would pass, the Winchester Repeating Arms Company would live on and see some of its most prosperous years later in the 1880s and into the 1890s. This was largely due to the acquisition of several designs of advanced mechanical repeating mechanisms by the one and only John Moses Browning. You might have heard of him. He's been around a minute. By the turn of the 20th century, Winchester had a whole fleet of long guns. We're not just talking rifles. We're talking the single shot model 1885 to the new and improved model 1886 lever action. By this time, Winchester was also making things like rimfire rifles with their model 1890 and even 1890 pump action 12 gauge that you could even still find when I was a kid in the early 90s. Also an important to note here is in 1893, Winchester began loading their cartridges with the latest ammunition technology Smokeless powder. Ta-da! By 1914, the world had again changed dynamics. The assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria would plunge Europe into World War I. This would be the first time the world had been at war on such a grand scale, and the resulting draw from the need of wartime provisions would cause a massive scale in the economic pace as we knew it. By 1915, Winchester had begun production of nearly a quarter million Enfield Pattern 14 rifles, which were sent across the big pond to be used by the British Army. Again, less than a year later in 1915, Winchester would again be producing wartime provisions, this time for the Russian Army with their order of nearly 300,000 300,000 1895s for the army of Tsar Nicholas II. Fun fact for you guys, do you know why Winchester nearly only made long guns? In the early 1880s, Winchester had begun experimenting and manufacturing revolvers. After all, at the time, the revolver was the number one carried item in the entire United States of America, right next to the handkerchief. After a few years of experimentation and what can only assume is some form of success, Colt was actually a little less than thrilled to see Winchester making and entering their market space. After a brief deliberation, Colt and Winchester would enter a sort of gentleman agreement, right, in 1883, signaling that Colt would stick to making revolvers and Winchester would stick to solely focusing on lever action rifles. It truly was a case of the enemy of my enemy is my friend type situation. In 1941, Winchester would be called upon by the US government to develop a light military carbine and cartridge combination that would help the Allies get a leg up in World War II. From the design to the production of the entire rifle and round, it only took 13 days. Now, this new rifle may ring a bell and you may, you know, be familiar with it as Winchester built more than 800,000 of the total of 6 million M1 carbines that would be manufactured during World War II. Dubbed the greatest battle implement ever devised by the one and only General George S. Patton himself, the M1 would prove to be a major asset for the Allied forces during the war. Winchester would again continue to innovate, invent, and produce over the next hundred or so years. We're talking shotgun shells, rifle ammunition, pocket knives, fishing reels. If you needed it, Winchester probably made it at one point or another. They even had roller skates at one point, for real. Look it up, it's a real thing. You can show it here. If that's not enough for you, Winchester also did things like introducing several new calibers of rifle ammunition, like the 308 Winchester, for example, AKA the 7.6 Tornado round you may have heard of. It's been featured in quite literally hundreds of Hollywood blockbuster hits across TV screens all across the country, and even produced the rifle that was ever deadly in the hands of the one and only Carlos Hatchcock II, who would use it in conflict. Winchester was even the first to introduce the rifled slug and steel shot waterfowl loads to market. 
In fact, I'm trying to make here, guys, is that they've done almost everything. By 1987, Winchester had quite the name and lineage. I mean, after all, when you look at their history, it's easy to see that Winchester really had seen and done pretty much everything over the years. Winchester Repeating Arms would be sold in 1987 to a group of private investors with a small minority stake being taken by Fabrique Nationale, aka FN Firearms. Over the next few years, FN would continue to scale its stake in the Winchester Repeating Arms company until they ultimately became the sole owner. Even still to this date, Winchester is continuing to develop new rifle lines. However, their primary focus is now more so on the ammunition side out of their Oxford, Mississippi plant. Regardless of all of that history and lineage, the one thing is for sure. Winchester Repeating Arms has been around for almost 150 years, and they continue to dominate in the world of ammunition to this day. That's a fact. With a pedigree like that, it's hard to hate them. But that's enough out of me. What do you guys think? Do you love Winchester? Do you hate them? Let us know down in the comment section below, and be sure to let us know who you want to see us cover next. With that, my name's Dustin. We'll see you guys on the next one. Stay free, friends.